G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy. We are doing our weekly edition of the Power Rankings, this time ahead of round nine of the 2024 season. There's a little bit of movement this week. I said I would continue to do this week to week and probably just make them slightly shorter videos. If you're new to this series, this is trying to get a, a, a snapshot, a reflection of the form that sides are currently in and trying to reflect, you know, what order we're kind of rating them in quality. And it, as the season goes on, I'm going to increasingly focus on the last five games in particular. If you're new to the channel in general, it would be much appreciated if you consider subscribing to this channel. I've noticed that over the last 28 days, more than 60% of people who have watched videos on this channel have actually not subscribed to the channel, which is the highest I've seen that number in a long time. So if you're enjoying the content or you want to see more regular AFL content, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. All right, let's whip through it and start from the bottom up. Uh, the bottom four remains... Uh, unchanged in terms of the teams who were there, uh, but there is a bit of a flip in order. So I've got North Melbourne still anchored in a 18th spots, you know, winless over the last five, let alone the last eight. Um, you know, some encouraging performance from youth against St Kilda, but naturally can't move up these rankings. Where I've changed it, as I've probably just got Richmond slotting below Hawthorne. Hawthorne have won two of their last five with the, an impressive win against the Bulldogs and, you know, beating North not too long before that. Whereas Richmond have one win in the last five and that was against the Sydney Swans and in general have looked, you know, increasingly off the pace bearing in mind that they do have, you know, injury situation at the moment, but I can't factor that in too heavily. We have to rate it on performance when considering these power rankings. It gets too murky if you try to allow for injuries. So big loss at home to the Dockers. I think things are starting to, you know, get harder for Richmond to, to withstand the injury situation that they're in currently. So Hawthorne justifiably jump above them. I've still got West Coast in 15th. Put up a good fight against Essendon. Hawthorne, I could see leapfrogging West Coast soon, but at the moment, haven't quite done enough to justify that. It does seem like Hawthorne are probably kind of reflecting how they started last year, really lackluster start to the season, and sort of got their act together around this point of the season last year. So we could see that happen again with Hawthorne, but at the moment on exposed form, I still have West Coast in 15th, who again, were solid enough against an Essendon side who you know are in pretty good form at the moment. The next couple of clubs, I've still got St Kilda and Gold Coast in this order. St Kilda beat North by 38 points. Gold Coast were disappointing in the Q clash, and therefore the order of those two teams stays the same. So I've got the bottom four in red, as you'll see, and I've got the Gold Coast Suns in orange, which just means... I'm almost at the point of ruling them out for finals. I really don't think they'll make finals, but uh, at the moment, they're probably still not with the same amount of certainty. And St Kilda, again, probably just stay in the white zone for another week, uh, but we'll see. I'm becoming less and less confident as weeks go by. So then I have the next four teams sort of grouped together. Um, in ninth, I have Fremantle. 10th, the Brisbane Lions. 11th, Adelaide. And 12th, the Western Bulldogs. So Adelaide have actually put together a pretty solid five weeks uh, they've beaten the Blues, the Power at North Melbourne, and some losses against the Bombers and the Demons at home. Uh, that's not a bad run of five games, and they justifiably leapfrog the Western Bulldogs this week, who have won one game in their last five. It happened to be a 10-goal win over St Kilda, hence why they stay above them. But they lost to Hawthorne, they lost to Fremantle, they lost to Essendon, and they lost to Ge Geelong in that time frame as well. So... They're lingering down around that 12th spot. They're in you know, not great form at the moment, and Adelaide justifiably leapfrogged them. So the Brisbane Lions still stay above the Adelaide Crows, and that could change this week. These two sides play each other, and uh, Brisbane have a number of injuries as well. So that will be telling as to where these two sides sit, although, like I said, injuries are a factor there. But Brisbane's last five haven't been too bad. They beat the Demons at the G. They beat North, they beat the Suns. These are the wins you'd expect, although you have to acknowledge as well they had an injury crisis in the Q Clash and still managed to win that game. And their two losses have been against the Cats and the Giants. Not great performances, but quality opposition by the same token. So Fremantle retained ninth spot. They haven't done enough to leapfrog Essendon, who I have in eighth and in the light green zone. So on Fremantle first, two good wins against the Bulldogs and the Tigers. It's close losses against the Blues and the Power and a horrific derby. That's their last five. And by comparison, Essendon have lost just the one game in their last five. And that was a big loss to the Power. They drew with the Pies, but they also beat the Dogs, the Crows, and the West Coast Eagles in Perth. So again, they're in light green because I don't fully trust this Essendon group just yet. And they probably haven't claimed a big enough scalp in that time. But drawing with Collingwood was a great... Yeah, arguably the best result in the last five, maybe beating the Bulldogs as well at the time. But on current form at the moment, you know, that, that Collingwood draw is probably the most convincing performance I've seen from them. 
I don't quite have him in that top echelon. So I'll reveal the next three. We've got Carlton, GWS, and Port Adelaide in that order. Now, Port Adelaide, you know, were really disappointing against the Crows in the showdown. They've slunk to the seventh out of the top seven teams for me. I've sort of been grouping as a top six or seven. We do have one new team in that. I'll get to that shortly. The Giants were undone by their cross-time rivals, the Swans. And again, it's not a horrific run of form. They've lost to the Blues and the Swans two teams that are ranked above them at the moment in their last five. And naturally I have Carlton above them, even though they've won just two of their last five with wins over GWS and Fremantle. Their form hasn't been great, but they did beat GWS in that patch. So I don't have GWS higher than me, if that makes sense. So the biggest mover in this mix I have is the Collingwood Football Club, who are undefeated in their last five, which makes them the only undefeated team in their last five games. And when you consider the opposition, the Brisbane Lions, Port Adelaide, and the Blues, as well as Hawthorne and a draw to Essendon. That is pretty compelling form, and now I'm starting to feel like Collingwood is starting to like really assert themselves on the competition again. With another game against West Coast this week, we'd imagine they win that game despite their injuries. So for me, Collingwood bounced back into the top four on power rankings. Whether they accumulate enough wins to you know be in the top four by the end of the season still remains to be seen because it's competitive. So then this is the top three. I have Sydney taking out top spot this week with a good win over GWS. I will caveat this with saying that their last five games has had one tough opponent, but they did win that game fairly convincingly against GWS. Otherwise, they've beaten the Gold Coast Suns, West Coast, Hawthorne, and then lost to Richmond. So all in all, not that convincing. But had they not just beat GWS, I might not have them leapfrogging Geelong, who were a little bit unlucky. I think you could justifiably still have Geelong first, but I've got them bumping down a spot with their recent loss to the Melbourne Football Club, their first loss of the season. I think you could go either way with these two teams. And Melbourne, who I think I had a little bit lower last week, move up with a good win over the Cats. Their only loss in the last five was against the Brisbane Lions, but their other wins have been Port Adelaide, the Cats, the Tigers, and the Crows. So that's probably how I rate it at the moment. Melbourne, you know, you could justifiably have them over the Cats. Maybe I have that wrong, but equally, I think you could have Geelong first still. And that's why it's tough to separate. But as always, I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. What would you do differently with these power rankings? It's going to be a very interesting weekend ahead. We've got all top eight teams play each other this weekend and naturally all bottom 10 teams play each other this weekend. So this will be revealing in terms of my power rankings. But as always, hope you enjoy the video guys and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.